everybody, it's Nico, and welcome to Across the Airways News with Nico Show. This YouTube show is a supplement to our weekly long-form podcast available on iTunes. On today's episode, I will be discussing ABC's adding additional Last Man Standing episodes, a CBS crossover event, the return date for Game of Thrones, my first take on Fox's new show, The Finder, AMC's addition of five more episodes of Walking Dead Season 3. I'll also be diving in with an opinion on ABC coming to their senses with the show Work It, some early news about Joss Whedon's next film, and a huge movie news from George Lucas. Finally, I close out the show with some Warehouse 13, Alcatraz Premiere, and Expendable 2 news. I also plug our friends over at Legendary Women Inc. and their fundraiser going on now. Just a reminder, for Dan and my weekly in-depth look at our favorite TV shows, check out the podcast on iTunes or visit us at acrosstheairwaves.com. First, so let's start things off today with our first news article. ABC needs a little more time improving its home and it has asked Last Man Standing to give a few more episodes. The network has added two more installments for a total of 24 episodes of the hit comedy, which is steadied out in the 7 to 8 million viewer range and a 3.1 out of 9 rating share in the all-important 18 to 49 range. TV by the Numbers is reporting that the show is in the probably renewed category for next season. CBS is planning to collide the universes of NCIS Los Angeles and Hawaii Five-0 again in a special two-night sweeps event. The story will revolve around a deadly virus and begin on Monday on Hawaii Five-0 with LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell crossing the Pacific to join the Hawaii Five-0 team and continuing on the following evening with Alex O'Loughlin and Scott Kahn arriving in Los Angeles to finish out the story arc with the NCIS Los Angeles squad. Sounds to me like a waste of time. It's time to mark your calendars with the blood of your enemies if need be. Season 2 of Game of Thrones begins April 1st. HBO made the announcement last week at, the, at its TCA press tour panel. The second season of the award-winning program and TV.com and soon-to-be ATA favorite will focus on A Clash of Kings, the second book in author George R. R. Martin's fantasy novel series, A Song of Ice and Fire. Expect kings clashing and one hell of a water fight in season two of this award-winning series. Additionally, HBO has revealed the premiere dates for a few of the other projects it has coming out soon. Game Change, the HBO film chronicling John McCain and Sarah Palin's 2008 unsuccessful presidential campaign, premieres March 10th. It stars Ed Harris and Julianne Moore as eerie facsimiles of McCain and Palin and is based on the book by the same name. Fox's new Thursday night ed edition, The Finder, is a light-hearted procedural with an extraordinary color palette. Unfortunately for the show, Many have said while they wished that that were enough to hook them on this Bones spin-off series, the pilot's heavy reliance on expository dialogue and narrative fluff left them little more than lukewarm. I feel creator Hart Hansen has developed an interesting cast of characters who live in an idealistic world where the good guys are quirky and upbeat, the bad guys are, are bumbling characters, and the scenery is always stunning, and while I enjoyed this episode, my family will probably be adding it to our weekly schedule. TV.com's editorial staff was less enthused, claiming last week's debut gave us an easy bake of an episode. Not a whole lot went into the execution. But you'll have to make up your own minds Thursdays on Fox. AMC expands The Walking Dead Season 3 and sets premiere dates for Mad Men and The Killing. AMC announced at the TCAs that the previously ordered third season of their hit The Walking Dead has been expanded to a 16-episode order. That's a bump up from the 13-episode second season, which will resume on February 12th at 9 p.m. Elsewhere, Mad Men finally will be returning to television with the two-hour season premiere on Sunday, March 25th at 9 p.m. The Killing will have its own two-hour season debut Sunday, April 1st at 8 p.m. In huge movie news, George Lucas has announced that he is retiring from filmmaking. For some fans, it's a bittersweet moment, especially to those critical of his more recent work in the Star Wars prequels and his perpetual tinkering with the original tri trilogy and its subsequent home releases. But he created Star Wars. This guy is a legend. 
Undoubtedly, the task of getting Red Tails, a big-budget film chronicling the World War II deeds of the famed and socially significant Tuskegee Airmen, was a difficult one for Lucas, who has always been known to appreciate having the autonomy to do the kind of films that he wants to make, the way that he wants to make them. On Red Tails, studio bigwigs were obstinate on the project, not giving him the time of day, treating the iconic filmmaker as if he was pitching a sequel to Bucky Larson. By the time he eventually overcame these obstacles and finally got the film made with director Anthony Hemingway, it might be the case that he is just fed up and had enough. Considering Star Wars A New Hope is my all-time favorite film, and I love the Indiana Jones series, not to mention American Graffiti and many others as well, this is a huge blow to my film watching. Work It, the sitcom, has been canceled. Cougar Town is now set to return Valentine's Day. It looks like the cross-dressing guys of Work It are out of work again. ABC has canceled the new sitcom, pulling it from the schedule after just two episodes, and I can't say that I'm surprised with all the negative press it was getting and the numerous groups calling for its cancellation. The first episode of Work It attracted a 2.0 rating in the 18 to 49 demographic. And when compared to the debut of already canned Man Up, ABC was down by 17%. This week's installment dropped like a rock, down 20% to a 1.6 in the demo with only 5.1 million. ABC pulled Man Up after the sitcom posted similar numbers, and now they've yanked Work It effective immediately. Repeats of Last Man Standing will fit the time slot for the remainder of the month. The unaired episodes of Work It may surface over the summer, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Now, with the cancellation of Work It, a slot has opened up for the inexplicably popular Cougar Town, which will air on Valentine's Day, February 14th, in the now vacant 8.30 slot. Joss Whedon's next film will be a supernatural romance. Though he wrote and directed The Avengers coming out in May, Whedon has already found the time to shoot a low-budget update of Much Ado About Nothing, and now actress Abigail Spencer, perhaps best known as Don Traper's former mistress, Miss Farrell on Mad Men, says she's just signed on for a brand new Whedon project next month. Spencer promised that more details would be announced in the next week, but teased it's the most romantic film in the history of time. It's a supernatural romance. Sounds interesting, and if it comes from Joss, I'm always down with giving it a watch. More details were promised, and we eagerly await their release. Alcatraz pre premiered to great ratings earlier this week, notching a 3.3 rating in the adult demo for its two-hour premiere. That made it the second most popular new drama premiere of the season, tying it with Revenge, but behind Once Upon a Time, super impressive 3.9. Alcatraz also bested Terranova's debut at 3.1, making Fox's impending decision regarding Terra Terranova's fate that much easier. As I've already said, many people tuned in to Alcatraz. However, the critics and many viewers were disappointed with the fact that Alcatraz is trying so hard to be lost 2.0 but most people feel that it just falls short of being that next big thing. Naturally, Alcatraz is being compared to Lost, and with Jorge Garcia, who played Hurley on Lost, starring in Alcatraz, the same composer doing the score, an island, and even the same logo font, the comparisons are correct on the- But please, for the love of all that is holy, don't compare Alcatraz to Lost. You'd be better off comparing Alcatraz to Fringe, another one of JJ's kids, because both follow the serialized procedural formula. However, if you want to be more accurate and impress your friends, don't compare Alcatraz to Fringe either. Compare the show to Flash Forward, because after two episodes, Alcatraz has uninspired knockoff written all over it. Despite this harsh criticism on my part, I will be watching it for a while just to see where it goes and see if it can capture my imagination. Warehouse 13's fourth season to expand to 20 episodes, with 7 episode additional order. I have learned that Sci-Fi is finalizing a deal to pick up 7 additional episodes of its flagship series what, Warehouse 13, bringing the drama's total fourth season order to 20 episodes. Good news for a great show. Expendables 2 is rumored to be going PG-13. If Chuck Norris says no swearing, then there's no swearing. 
Will The Expendables 2 be a quote-unquote clean movie? According to a rumor, one of the conditions that was reportedly made with star Chuck Norris was that the film cut the hard language that the actor who presents himself as a moral role model for young people did not want present in this movie. There's no word from Sly Stallone or anyone else whether this rendition of The Expendables will be clean, but at least the Chuck Norris scenes will be PG-13. Finally, our friends from Legendary Women, Inc. are doing their annual fundraiser for Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. The fundraiser, sponsored by Legendary Women, Inc. and Sweet, will run from January 12th to February 12th, 2012. All monies raised will be donated to the Reeve Foundation on February 20th, 2012. In 2010, Legendary Women, Inc., turned it into an annual event, and last year were able to personally present Allison Mack with a certificate showing just how much they had been able to do. Those interested in contributing to the fundraiser can donate through PayPal at fundraising at legendarywomen.org or by going directly to the donation page of the Reeve Foundation's website on your screen now and taking the time to add a note indicating that they're donating as part of the Smallville fundraiser. If interested, please visit their site and donate to a very worthy cause. And that's the news with Nico for this week.